that how workforce can do a miracle in the RNG sector, apparel manufacturing. If we can upskill the workforce also with respect to the future of manufacturing, whether it is electric vehicle, whether it is autonomous vehicle, whether it is how to run an autonomous plant, how to run a plant which will be cohabited by robots as well as humans. I think that level of upskilling is the future. And of course, quite a few skill building activities happening, a lot of accelerator programs are running, and the aspirations and ambitions that we have been seeing, I think that's also an achievable goal. And finally, with respect to the logistics and supply chain, how it is built. From an ambition to becoming a self-sufficient nation, whether it is we supply all the mobile phone for ourselves, whether we manufacture all the vehicles for ourselves, to an aspiration to become an exporter in the world, how we scale up. For internal consumption to go up, infrastructure will help us a lot. For export to go up, supply chain will help us a lot. So those are the four basic building blocks that are going to fuel the journey of manufacturing in the future for Bangladesh. And we see a lot of prospects there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Orijit Chakraborty, the managing partner of PwC Bangladesh, uh, for your, I, I, I very rightly pointed out he would be able to give a holistic take on this, and he did. So he looked at all the elements that are necessary for this ecosystem to take hold, and uh, overall the uh, you know upskilling that would be required to cater to this, uh, uh, you know, further growth in investments in high tech industries in the country. So thank you very much, Orijit, for your uh, thoughts on that. Uh, let me now uh, turn to uh, Mr. Prasad Palsokar. He is the managing director of uh, Siemens Industrial Bangladesh Limited. Uh, so we all know that Siemens has a very long history in Bangladesh and uh, has provided some of the high technologies in telecoms, health tech, and especially industrial automation. So I would like to know from you, Mr. Palsukar, uh, could you please tell us about your perception of industrial automation in Bangladesh? And where does, the, that, does this point to in terms of industrial productivity uh, and opportunities for automation products being manufactured here in Bangladesh? Thank you. So uh, first of all, thanks to ABCCI and uh, all the stakeholders for, uh, for this event. I think these forums are very important when we think of trillion dollar economy. Uh, I, if I think of industrial automation per se, Bangladesh uh, has been exposed to a lot of global OEMs because that is how the industry has been uh, sourcing for many years. Of course, that sourcing is uh, limited to industries which are prominent locally at the moment. But there is a huge potential that can be derived out of this concept for across the board industries. So I will, uh, if, I, if I look back last, uh, the second day of this event, the key words or key themes coming out were all about efficiency, productivity, competency and sustainability. And all these words, when we link these to the automation part, uh, they are, in this context, they are definitely exact fit. Uh, I, I can also relate very much to Matlub Bhai when he says, uh, so I, when I was doing engineering, uh, automobile was part of a mechanical lab. That's, that's how the setup always was 20 years back. Today, automobile and high tech, are very much synonymous. And that is also where uh, the global OEMs play a very strong role because when we say high tech, the industrial automation is very much built into it. So there are, there are two parts when we talk about automation. One is uh, the actual manufacturing part of it, which is uh, what we call as, as, a, as Siemens or as a technology OEM, what we call as from ideation to the realization or from design to dispatch. So automation is not limited anymore only to the hardware part. 
automation starts right from the conceptualization stage. It is how the product is designed, how the assembly is designed, how each component is designed, and all that can be virtualized today. So everything can be virtual. We, we can significantly reduce errors, assembly engineering, time to market, time to realization of the product, by doing all this automation virtually first, and then bringing it to the actual physical assembly line. And that is where, in today's world, automation plays a strong role. Once, uh, if, I, if I think of products coming out of factory already, uh, and since we are on automobile topic today, uh, the next role of automation or uh, the global technology OEMs is also in setting up all this infrastructure. So it is, again, conceptualizing how the infrastructure should be. Where is, where is the network required? Where are the charging required? What is the data backbone required? Uh, the telecom companies also will play a lot of role in all this virtual world. Where is the actual hardware is to be set up? How it will connect to the users? All this infrastructure is equally important as it is for the traditional industrial automation. And uh, this is always our request to all the manufacturers or to the stakeholders. It is sometimes easy to bring in a technology partner a little late in the discussion because it is seen in a traditional way. But in the modern uh, aspect or context, it has to be there right in the beginning. Then only we can really take the efficiency and productivity out of the whole mechanism. Uh, discussing this little late, maybe we are not utilizing it fully. And I would also request, since we have uh, colleagues representing the government as well, that policy has a major role to play in this adoption uh, because the needs of the users are going to be different. So what the adoption of a commercial e-vehicle infrastructure or manufacturing would need very different incentives because maybe for them CapEx is a bigger problem. Uh, most of the transport uh, agencies or transport uh, wings may not have right capex to start with. For a passenger vehicle segment, that need is maybe not capex, it is range anxiety or the infrastructure. For a two-wheeler owner, maybe it is not also the infrastructure because for him it is the socket at home that he would use or she would use. But for them, the safety, reliability, service are the aspects. So, each user would have different needs. Uh, policy has to, of course, drive those incentives for those needs. And uh, we can always, uh, we, are, we are in Bangladesh for the last 65 years. We can always bring in global learning so that Bangladesh learns. It is an advantage, I would say, uh, that it is, uh, there are countries who are ahead in this cycle and we can learn from the mistakes and we don't repeat those here. And we can always play a role in that. So thank you, Mr. Prasad Palsukar. Yes, uh, and thank you for your offer to help with in the area of uh, having segmented or differentiated policy instruments uh, for industrial automation. That's that's a very very good thought on that. Uh, so uh, we are very lucky to have uh, many luminaries from our uh, industry here in this room. I see our uh, MCCI senior vice president, Mr. Kamaranti Rahman the FBCCI uh, co-conveners of this session, Ms. Shomi Kaiser, the president of ECAB, and Mr. Almas Kobir, the president of the Bangladesh uh, Malaysia Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We have uh, the, the president of Chidong Chamber here, Mr. Mahbub, uh, and I see Mr. John Sultan Ahmed, former senior vice president of FBCCI, uh, former BGMA president, Mr. Pervez, and many others, uh, I'm sorry if I don't recognize all of you by name. Uh, but what we would like to actually do is, uh, uh, you know, take questions from you. Uh, we have, yeah, uh, as you can see, a very uh, stellar, you know, group of uh, speakers here. That doesn't include me, by the way. It's the <laughs> others who are stellar. Uh, but in any case, uh, uh, I would like to, uh, we have, maybe we can take 10 minutes uh, for questions and answers. Uh, so if you kindly 
I would like to first see how many of you would like to ask a question. Can you raise your hands, those of you who would like to ask a question? Only one? We can probably take uh, three or four. Okay. So, Mr. Dewan Sultan Ahmed, uh, can you give me the microphone to him, please? Yes. Thank you. Actually, this seminar is a very timely seminar, I think, because our Prime Minister declares that Bangladesh will be a smart Bangladesh 2041. Two, two, and so our people also need these smart vehicles, that is, electrical vehicles. So as soon as possible, we, we should start the manufacturing of the electrical vehicles in Bangladesh. And the two things very important. Number one is development of HR, human resources for the vehicles, and the infrastructure development is for this the uh, uh, backward linkage industry also to be industry important. And so, the lot of manufacturers and the dealers are here. I think the government is very much eager to help, and our electric generation is also going very high. And it we cannot sustain actually this. We cannot make it sustainable. So I request the policymakers are here to look into this matter. It is more important than the revenue collection than to make the city 